Welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on over there for some more Naya Feather. All right, we played this deck for the first time yesterday, uh, late last night, and it was really impressive. Uh, it was a lot of fun to play first, and then it, two, it was really good. And, um, you know, I wasn't really expecting a ton of the deck, and but it really delivered. So I uh, want to play it again today because it was a lot of fun yesterday, and so we'll try it out again and see if we want to uh, start tuning this and, and everything. So basically, we are a Hero of Precinct 1 deck. As you can tell, everything else in the main deck besides a Johnny Adversary of Tyrants is a multicolored spell to be able to trigger Hero of Precinct 1. But besides that, I call this Naya Feather, of course, because of Feather the Redeemed. And I'll kind of go on a little spiel about it like I did yesterday. So basically, the problem I've had with the Feather the Redeem decks that you see around these days um, is that they play, like Boros Feather, for example, they play a lot of like crappy draft commons that are like your effects that like, like, gr like Gird for Battle or Grid for Battle or whatever, like plays that and like Reckless Rage and like all, all these things that are like, don't do anything unless you have Feather in play kind of stuff and I don't know I, I don't really like it and instead we're playing like a lot of spell like our uh, 11 spells that we are playing that can target things that can target feather and 10th district legionnaire that can trigger these are spells that just can be used on their own like all the time you know like if you don't have anything to integrity uh, you can just use it for intervention or if you don't have anything to thrash you can just play a threat um Collision Colossus, I guess you kind of need either re removal with Collision or or you can Colossus one of your creatures. That's why I only have three of that one. But these are all, like, those are all just, like, pretty decent spells. And they're really versatile because they have, you know, the two modes and, like, the two modes can be used a lot of different ways also. Um, so they're just real versatile. And so instead, we're just playing an aggro deck with, like, a bunch of, like, good creatures in here. Um, and we're not really reliant on feather so the cards that are like our two ofs here we have swift blade vindicators that are just awesome whenever you get to pump them up like like even just casting a colossus on a swift blade vindicator makes it attack for 10 because it makes it five double strike so that's just a ton of damage in there tajik was probably the weakest card in our deck that we played last time maybe tajik and domri um Maybe, but I mean, I, I like Tajik and I think it's pretty good, but it, it did seem a little weak. Uh, but that's like a, a slot that we're going to be thinking about, like if, if we want to change it all or anything. Ajani's really good at bringing back any of these 10, 10 2 drops, especially bringing, bringing back 10th District Legionnaire for haste. That's awesome. Plus, it gets to pump these things up. Um, so that's really good. It really is awesome. Uh, Domri, we don't, we don't really have to cast a lot of things with that extra mana, but just pumping up our creatures, especially whenever we go wide with Hero of Precinct 1, and given all those creatures plus 1, plus 0, and then being able to fight stuff uh, for a little bit of extra removal is nice also. Sideboard worked out pretty well yesterday. Not really changing, so not changing anything with the list since yesterday. We're going to try it again some more, and um, see if we see if we need to change anything. But yeah, let's just get to some games. No, we're not we're not doing any card draw. We are attacking and attacking hard and attacking fast. Naya Feather, there you are. Okay, yeah, yeah, you have a donation deck today? I can I can do that instead of Demir Control and push Demir to control to tomorrow. That's not a problem at all. Ooh, uh, I don't think we want the five land double four drop hand that we just had there. All right, we need we need one more land, so ditching the Aurelia. Our opponent's name is pretty sweet. Mo mana, mo problems. I'm just casting this while I can. Get some damage in. Hopefully we draw a land and so that we're casting these th these three mana spells. But yeah, so we're just two mana deal four like a one a two mana one one that ETBs and deals four to them. 
That's fine. Well, let's definitely get the Swift Blade Vindicator in play. So we can start attacking with that next turn. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 5 4. That thing's big. Um. Alright, attack time. Usually it's thirty dollars for me to build the deck for like a for a build around deck. Okay. So if we go ten, eleven. If I Colossus the Vindicator, they take eleven and go to three. But they have both their creatures, and I'm just sitting with a Vindicator and two other creatures, but they're at three. If I Colossus this thing, they still trade. Like, they trade. They take two, three, four, five. They go to nine. So basically, they go to nine. So basically, is it worth, is it worth six points to have this Lich? Dead. Not really. Yeah, we'll see if they have... <clears throat> we'll see if they have removal. They basically, basically need removal for this Vindicator. I will protect the virtue of this world. Harness the elements. Hmm. So that should kill him. That does two tr two trample plus the midnight reaper trigger, and there we go. That's right. Our opponent had m more mana than us, and they had also had more problems than us as well. So it looks like their name is very apt. It's our green red or green black creature stuff. You like Domri's ambush? For green and feather? Okay. Yeah, I, I think Thrash is a better card than Domri's Ambush. In general. I don't think I really even want a sideboard here in this matchup. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, so I guess if you sorry, it was a question from a while ago, but if you didn't see it there, double strike and trample. Um, it, so basically, you get to deal the first damage or the first strike damage, and if there's any if there's any that tramples, it'll trample over, and then you get to do regular damage, and again, if there's any after that, it tramples over. So you you know you attack twice. And you first, of course, deal as much damage to kill any blocking creatures, and then all the rest go to the opponent. Wild Growth Walker is definitely the card I did not want to see at all. I guess I could have just assumed that they were a Wild Growth Walker deck.
All right, I'm hoping that last card or their draw step's not more removal. Not attacking with the 2-4, huh? This is usual. Any skirmish nice. you can walk away from, right? Bustin' heads is my bread and butter. Oh wait, not nice. My thrash doesn't Thrash won't kill the Legionnaire or won't kill the Wild Growth Walker now. Because we don't have that extra power. Burly man! Thanks to the donation deck there, Burly Man. Uh, yeah, I want that. All right, let's see what he said there. All right, that one in best of one. Perfect. Yes, please. Um, the problem with playing Naya Arcbo, I don't know, the mana is going to be kind of tough with that, like. But maybe with the explore creatures, it could work. You really want like one of the colors to be a pretty big splash. You don't you don't want like real cheap of like cheap cards of one of the colors. Think about like Soul Time mid range had like blue as a splash. You know they didn't really have cheap blue cards. Like they just needed blue like sometime later on in the game for like Hostage Taker, Hydroid Crisis, stuff like that. And that's why their mana worked real well. Yeah, this that game was um That game was also impressive, you know, like these things hit hard. All right, so Burley man, when when would you like me to play your Tron Best of 1 deck? Okay, whenever I got the time? Okay. Does tomorrow sound good? They just got a... We also just got a Simic controlled donation deck here that I was just telling you what I would do. And then if so, tomorrow, do you want me to play it like, you know, first, second, third, or fourth? Okay, so later, third or fourth? Okay. All right, I'll do it. I'll do it fourth tomorrow. That sounds good. All right, so Grixis is is not a matchup I love very much. Like this was Grixis was the the deck we lost to yesterday with this because of all their removals. Trigger. Look at 
is written down. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Crumble Cruds. Ugh, that card's so good. That card's so good. Hmm. So I'm definitely really worried about definitely really really worried about them having another enter the god eternals and then making that thing an 88. I will spare you in exchange for eternal servitude. I suffer for your cause. Probably should have just done this last turn instead of just making the... I should have just done this last turn because the Spellbreaker is still a 4 4. I will return one day. I should have just done that last turn. The focus and discipline. I have just the trick for this. All right, well, Narset's not very scary. <laughs> oh, and Grass Rampage. So we have Lethal here being, you know, thrashing this Bolus. If we draw a land and we get to Spellbreaker, then we have, like, Super Lethal. And we can just do this thing. Bolus is thrashed. Remember that in the story? Whenever Aurelia thrashed Bolus? I think that happened in the storyline. We need Path of Metal to be more cool. <laughs> Path of Metal wouldn't really work too well with our Hero Precinct 1 tokens, though. I guess I want some Knight of Autumns and some Harpooners. Just kind of have some more threats and take out Integrity Intervention. Integrity was like pretty good that game. Maybe I take out a couple of Domries just to lower my curve a little bit, like two Domri to Integrity.
Yeah. Uh, no, blue black controls getting moved to tomorrow. Got a donation deck to do instead. And I don't know if Simic Control is the right name for this. What would y'all call this deck? Yeah, Heroic Reinforcements can definitely be in the deck. It's possible Heroic Reinforcements would be better than the Tajiks and Domries. I don't really want like a whole bunch more fours though. Yeah, this this could definitely be a heroic reinforcements. Like, you know, maybe just a couple. <laughs> uh, no, I don't. I don't play mono red. Too much. Um, I play like mono red mid range. Mono red aggro. And like mono white aggro, like those decks. Not not really for me. This is not a very good hand. I don't really like mulliganing too much against removal heavy deck. This is not a very good hand. These draw some lands, but not white or not a uh, green mana. This is not spectacular either. We're gonna draw some lands. We could have drawn some green mana. I guess I could just discard Mountain. Really? Please block. Please block. They didn't block. Yeah, we have 10th District Legionnaires. It is good to see strength is born of struggle. It's been weird. We have drawn nothing but our two Tajiks, two Ajani's, basically. We just have a ton of spells over there. They're not hitting any land drops. They just have a fistful of cards. I will lend you my strength. Jeskai Feather? I don't I don't really like Jeskai Feather. I know you get dive down with blue, but I don't really like it. I don't I don't think it has good enough threats and everything. Please draw some other creature that I can kill this hostage taker with. Thank you. It's not the best use of my see it a Johnny, but I see in you. Oh, enter the God Eternals. Gross. Go 
Well, they did clear off two lands for us. Or no, just one land? Not as good. Oh, right. Look how far you have come. That's the thing. Tajik prevents Tajik prevented the damage to Hero, and so they, they didn't gain life because it says you only gain life equal to the amount of damage dealt. So I was going to be able to I plussed on those two creatures because then I was gonna have I was gonna attack with everything and have the Tajik mentor onto the other onto the hero. But good job, Tajik. Way to be a card people don't play too much and don't know how to play against. They came really close to blocking and letting me just activate Tajik for first strike earlier. <laughs> yeah, yesterday during our league, somebody tried to deal damage to another creature also with Tajik out. Yeah, it just happens. Seen by, yeah, standard is fun these days. Yeah, there's a lot of different things you can be doing in standard. Jeskai Feather gets Beam Spitter Mage. So yeah, you're just much more of a combo deck. You can see how we've had zero feathers this game, and we've been or this this league, and we've been doing just fine. Well, can a couple Spellbreakers kill an opponent? <laughs> yeah, we have played Feather in the deck. Yesterday we did some. We need to draw more spells. <laughs> they have so many cards. We have so little. Yeah, Hero Precinct 1 is a pretty good wild card expenditure. Esper Hero is one of the best decks in the format also. Question is, is it worth it to buy packs at all with gems? Yes, if you, if you like standard and you want to just acquire new standard cards the most efficient way possible. That is the thing to be doing. But if you like drafting, drafting like with gems, it's a better a better value you get with your gems of of acquiring cards through drafting and playing sealed. Sealed is really good too. Yeah, like really sealed is better than, than drafting. Um but you don't get like the specific cards you want, of course, and that takes a lot longer because you know you have, you know you're doing you're playing your draft and sealed and everything. That's a good use of gems. <laughs> yeah, Hero Precinct One is much much better than Hunted Witness. Agree. Um, we just. I mean, we could make a 4-4, four, four, but I think I'm just going to kill that. That seems like an important card for them. So we could have like basically had them down to 5 like this and then and had a four an extra 4-4 four, four in play. But then they would have the Electromancer still. Oh, please, please don't cast three spells. No Electromancer, no three spells. I there's there's no possible way our opponent blocks. <laughs> so the question of why not just attack first and see if they block? There's just no possible way they they block. But I guess. I guess I could have done that. That's just not even a possibility. Uh, we're just drawing 
bunch of lands after our mold of five. My creations are things of beauty. Just gonna shock. I'm just, I'm, I'm just hoping they take the two trample damage between these. Oh wow, they didn't have shock, so they didn't. Yeah, they didn't double block my four four. All right, so integrity intervention. That's the card we want to draw. Integrity intervention. Their opponent's playing too many spells. They need they need an intervention. When you say there's zero downside to just attacking first, it's just that it takes a little longer to play. That's a downside. Instead I can just play my spell and then go to attacks, attack all, and go the next turn. So that's a down that's a downside. Alright, intervention. Alright, well, got to find this. I am proud to deliver us to victory. I know how to stop you. If our opponent attacks out, we're dead. That was the slowest attack all. We came so close on our Moldify with just like two spell breakers and nothing else. We came real close. Just couldn't quite finish the job. All right, so we get a couple harpooners. Not even one harpooner. I don't really want a Johnny. What do I want instead of a Johnny, though? Do I want Rhythm of the Wild? Yeah. The is really expensive. Not bad or anything, but it's pretty expensive. So I like Rhythm of the Wild because it turns these from being 2-2s two into 3-3s. Three Just Rhythm's really good against Shock. Maybe faster than Lyra. Let's just go with it. Let's not go down to five again.
if I play this and they have lava coil, I'm I'm dead. I guess I have I guess I have threat. Okay, never mind. I have I have threat. Then I I don't get to thrash. Yeah, a lot a lot of these play two black sources. The one mana plus one attack draw card trick. It yeah, defiant strike. I don't think it's better than anything else. As you can tell, just having having too many tricks in in your deck is a big problem. Like you need you need enough threats. I don't want to take out threats for it, and I I like these kind of tricks more because if your creatures are dead, these can actually do stuff. Nope, no giant growth. <laughs> yep. Sorry. That's a good draw. If you think I'm crazy, wait till you see my mates. <laughs> That's the sound of a stampede coming straight at ya. That's a good draw. Changes the clock too, like you know, gets that extra power. Gets rid of one of those phoenixes for now. We'll see if, if it comes back, you know, how they attack, what we want to do here. I think I, I would prefer to use Thrash as removal over Collision Colossus, over Collision. But it looks like we're going to have to in, Integrity. If we go down to four, though... If they swing them both at me, I'm kind of dead. I guess I'm not kind of... I guess I'm not. Not yet. I was considering casting Colossus. There's two Phoenixes in there? Come on. Four, eight, thirteen. Ugh, we're so close. What's that? Something smells rotten. Wait, that might be me. Baffling End doesn't get rid of Phoenix. Phoenix costs four mana. Baffling End gets rid of things with three or less.
My poor opponent, I had a God Pharaoh statue out and they tried to cast Finale of Promise for two but didn't have the extra mana to pay all the additional costs. Yeah, we could have Seal Away in that slot, honestly. We could have Seal Away in the Baffling End slot. It's a lot better against Phoenix. For sure. We could have that. I think we beat Phoenix yesterday with the deck. Overall, I, I don't mind my Phoenix matchup. Just that game, you know, game, game one, we mold to five. And we still almost killed our opponent. We put him down to like two. And then that game, my hand just <clears throat> was really bad. Like my hand was really bad and we, you know, we would have been two points away from killing our opponent, but they also just had three Phoenixes. So like they just had a, a pretty decent hand there with all the Phoenixes. I, I don't mind that matchup though. This, I don't really know why I'm, Keeping, it's because I'm going to draw land, that's why. That's right. We don't have a, a deck... We don't have a deck that mulligans too well. Admittedly, without the card draw that we have. So we do... Uh, 14... For me, it's just business as usual. We won't answer to other kids. Cascade constructed? I don't know. Uh, it's not, not a format I looked at too hard. So basically just turning this into one mana deal four upstairs. Because um, I'm just going to have the Domri down to be able to pump the power. Next turn we'll have the Spellbreaker Haste uh, with Colossus. Ooh, just doing that main phase. GG. Busting heads is my bread and butter. Oh my gosh, I chose 1-1 one, one counter. Ugh, whatever. So they have Nezahal. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I didn't have lethal though without that. I would add a way to turn. I don't know. Our main deck's great. They were soul tie. They wow growth walking it up. This deck's pretty fun. The arc bow. Let's get this mentor. Yeah, I assume they're a Vanifar deck. Yeah. That's a very fair assumption that they're a Vanifar deck there with the Fibble Tip and everything. Mm 
Probably no Krasis. Yeah, Tajik does prevent damage from fighting abilities. Yep. Of course, not to itself, but to other creatures. Yep, sure does. Alright, well, this Colossus. Dom refight. Deal eight. That's a win. Yeah, it's on there. It's from yesterday. Jinxed. It's on Stream Decker. Okay, cool. You found it. Yeah, same deck we played yesterday. Black Mythic Artifact from Kaladesh. The Black Mythic Artifact from Kaladesh. What was that? <laughs> what is it called? Feather? I don't know. We got Feather in there. We haven't drawn Feather at all this whole this whole league all four matches we haven't drawn a feather at all but no we don't defend we don't depend on um feather too much oh noxious gear hulk right right uh, or obnoxious gear hulk right right that's why i like it it's a feather deck that you don't have to play like a bunch of bad cards and try to make feather really good it's just a it's just a good aggro deck that has some cool feather sy synergies I had feather comp I had feather stuff yesterday. I don't think we had any today. I don't think. Mono white's probably tough. We probably lose here. Um yeah, Mike Man, if you want to build a Um If you want to build a Boros stack. Or a, a feather deck. Um, I know another viewer, or subscriber of the channel has been having fun with this Boros feather deck. I'm not blocking a Vanguard with the Legionnaire, so I guess I'll attack. There's no way they should block, but hopefully they do. Mm, they didn't. Looks like we're going to be too slow on the draw. Mm -hmm. 
We have Deafening Clarions in our sideboard. It's like our, it's our card here to help us out. It's probably still not very good for us, this matchup. The, this 2-2 two -two can block like these 1-1 one -one life linkers. I am I'm not winning any kind of race with with by attacking with that 2-2. Two -two. So we got like the 4-4 four -four that can block the, those 2-2s, two -two, this 2-2 two -two can block those 1-1s. One like these things have life link and everything. We Huh. Benelish Marshall. All right, Baffling Ends, Lyra, Clarions, Knight of Autumn. Is that enough? I don't think we need any of these. All right, so what are we not playing? I don't know, maybe I need Colossus to try to get through. I guess I got the flying. Tajik's definitely out. Domri can kill some stuff. Swiftblade can just just dominate though. I don't know if I want to take out I don't think this is a Swift Blade out matchup. I like it's probably a Johnny out. Um, I guess if I am taking out Colossus, we'd take out Vindicator. I I feel like Vindicator is better than 10th D District Legionnaire, though. I'm not sure I want this card too much, or maybe just like three of those. It's going to be harder for us to pump up the Vindicator, though, now. But we still have ways. I want one of these. Uh, I guess not. Just feel it would be really slow if we cut Legionnaire. Maybe we just rely on Hero Precinct 1. Alright, untap land. Come on, dealer. Give me a shock land. Let's go. Shock me. Alright, dealer. Shock me. Boom. Let's go. <laughs> Maybe I could splash Chain Whirler in here. La Rune Enforcer. Sure. See, we'd be one red source away from playing the Chain Whirler. We splashed it. Gideon. I walk a righteous path. Why is that even necessary? Plays Gideon.
Prepare for battle. How these lands look, I have to like be real careful. Check in and make sure we're, our auto tap wasn't going to mess us up there. I can take a hit or two. We need to start drawing spells. We've only drawn lands this whole game so far, which was good. The first one in, in particular, the second one was fine. The third one was okay. Don't don't need this. And now we can't we can't draw a fourth one in a row. We really can't. Got to start drawing. Spells. So they can give Sky Marcher Aspirant Life Link, and then I gain life, and then attack and gain life. They're gonna give it Vigilance. I'm guessing they're not attacking with it. <laughs> wow. Yes, please. Four lands in a row to start. Ugh. Yuck. Yuck, 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 yuck. Alright, well, at least Gideon's dead. But it could kill both my heroes. Just no blocks. That Johnny's Pride Mate definitely doesn't want to just kill a 1 1. Yeah, and the Lord Reinforcer. They could have just ate both 1 1s. Just no blocks. Good question there. War Boss or Thieva Sanity for the uh, Nexus matchup? I've really liked Thieva Sanity myself, but. And I haven't tried to. You know, just. Being fair, I've not tried. Wait, do I just need to kill the others? That thing's about to gain flying. Alright, I'm definitely double blocking that. And trading one for two. This thing's gonna grow. I guess we let yeah, we'll, we'll let them have the flyer. Five lands in a row are my first five draws. It's unlucky. We need these chain whirlers. Turns out they're easy to cast. What? Oketra? What is that? Anyway, I, what I was saying is I'm intrigued by war boss. Never tried it. So if I if I thrash the aspirant, they block the legionnaire. I deal seven to them, put them down to four. I think that's what I do, and I make two more one ones. 
And I get to scry. Just hope they whiff. Yeah, I mean... It's probably better than a random card. Thankfully, they didn't kill two of my 1-1s one earlier. Uh, that's not a whiff. We still have lethal, though, because it costs three. Whew, there's a three-mana creature. Good, so they don't get to activate Adanto the first fort. That's big. Wow. Just what's what's that attack about? Um Yeah, can we draw one feather please? Okay, I'll try next game. Yeah, so what if Oketra did have reach instead of double strike? What if Oketra was a five... Uh, like a five five with reach instead of this three six double strike? I kind of want one of Johnny. We saw like that game just kind of stall out i could see i could see like with hero precinct one like the game kind of stalling out and i kind of want just one of johnny i'm gonna do that over a legionnaire What if Oketra was just indestructible? <laughs> no, it wouldn't have two... Two psych... Yeah, it wouldn't have two... Yeah, so it was a four mana, three, six reach. Oh, I mean, it would be better. Yeah, if you... The more you reduce Oketra's cost, the better it's going to be because of, like, that ability. With it being five mana, that's kind of incentivizing it to be, like, more close to the top of the curve. It's hard to play it, then play a bunch of creatures. I mean, if it was like a 4-4, four, four, you know, like 3... If it was a 4-4, four, 3-4 four, four without double strike, would it be better? If it's 4 mana? Then 5 mana, give it double strike and give it 2 more toughness? Possibly. The difference between 4 and 5 mana is huge. like to draw a third land. Sun Cleanser? Okay, that thing blocks well. One fours are good at blocking. <clears throat> Not Gideon. This is a prime day for justice. Oh, I wish I would have played Vindicator. Vindicator could like kill that Gideon. I believe in you, friend. I'm not going to just integrity here. There's 
Actually, maybe I should have. Get the 1-4 out of there, and then next turn just play Aurelia on the Vindicator. I was thinking I was going to be like Integrity, integrity plus like Thrash or, or Baffling End next turn. So baffling End. Looks like. Yeah, sorry, Papa Doc. Uh, I'll be pl I'll play the Demir deck tomorrow. I believe in you. Nine. If our opponent blocks well, we're pretty dead. Uh, hoping they don't block very well. That's a good block. Well, they did it. Well, we're pretty dead. And we can clear their battlefield at least. I guess we're not pretty dead. I like that they had their 1-1 block my 1-1. I may need to ch chump with this 1-1 here. Playing Aurelia next turn. Yeah, Sun Cleanser is a good card against Mono Red. Yes, it blocks very well. And yes, it does shut down Steamkin. Ow. Yeah, it is good there. If you're two drops getting Lava Coil, that's fine. I mean, you're not going to have like two mana cards that aren't dying to Lava Coil kind of thing. No. Uh. That's that's awful. Another one of those one fours. It's so annoying. does also just shrink the steamkin at the time. Okay. Even though Sun Cleanser dies to Lava Coil, I, I don't think you can really make the case that it's not good against Mono Red. I, I guess if, if your goal is slowing them down, is if your goal is winning the game, it doesn't like help you win the game, but it, it definitely helps you slow them down. There's just no denying that. 
Your light will yeah, what if it just removed darkness. counters from Planeswalkers? Think how busted this card would be. Mono Red plays Lava Coil in sideboards. So sad my Vindicator's dead. We're actually looking pretty good right now. Just leave this back just in case. Okay. I was like, they could have like a settle or a seal. Or no, I guess they don't have settle man anymore, but they could have like, and then they couldn't even seal away because that thing wasn't tapped. I don't know. It's it's just one damage I could have attacked in for, but left it back. Now we're gaining a bunch of life, so. Go life link, gain eight. We did it. All right, four and one. Where's my final boss playlist? That'd be zero Frisky Biscuits. If you're talking about Mono Red Aggro, I've, I haven't played it. But Mono Red mid range, you know, like the Mono Red Crisis that we play. I've played that. We have, I don't think we've drawn Feather at all this entire league. I don't, really don't remember drawing Feather this entire league. So that means this is going to be the Feather game right here. Let's get white, white, red. White, white, red. Ah, no feather. I thought for sure. I, I checked the mana first and then looked over at the cards. I thought for sure this was the feather game. Are you heading to Sleep Storm? There you go. Yep. Good night. See you tomorrow. Discovery. Are they trying to say that Angrath should be on the Discovery channel? Maybe that's what they can go watch some birds on the Discovery channel. Feast. Oh, I should. Yeah, I guess I could have integrity that and save that. I could have just gone to combat, but whatever. We got a lot of things to play. Too many things to play, not enough time. Two phoenixes. We got two little birdies over there. Really, it seems pretty good against birds. Now I was gonna intervention the Electromancer. At this point, where they could play another land and have five mana, it's not it's not too difficult to cast three spells with five mana. So I just want more pressure.
Yeah, they would have been able to play three spells with the five mana. Just fine, and then they would have double shocked and killed my spellbreaker and Ooh. Tajik. Okay. I could have gone the other way and put it on Tajik and made Tajik a 5-2 with Trample and then and then mentored onto the Aurelia. But that's the exact blocking that I figured that our opponent would do. And we're just going to Integrity here. And now, all right. So now we're gonna be targeting the Tajik. And yeah, Spellbreaker is better than a, than a Johnny. So the the problem with doing the other line. So the reason why the five two is not better is because if I do the five two line and they have, then they they definitely pro like I assume they're gonna have their electromancer block there. So I think they'll have like the two birds, like they would they'd have double bird block Aurelia and they would have the electromancer block the five two. And I couldn't do first strike for the Tajik to save it plus pump the Aurelia. I couldn't save both of them. But if I put the if I do do it the way I did, the Tajik's a four three and then they don't block the Tajik because it's a four three. It has the three toughness, and then I can use my pump spell to, to save Aurelia. So I still have both creatures around. <laughs> can you sideboard Feather in? <laughs> Alright, so this was the matchup we lost earlier. So maybe I should sideboard differently. I did not bring in Harpooner or Lyra Dawnbringer earlier. So I'm guessing I'm supposed to be doing that. I think I want to take out Domri. I think maybe I took out a Johnny last time, but I want to take out Domri. Fighting when they have like the instant speed shocks and stuff. I do kind of like rhythm still. I remember we we played this matchup yesterday. At least I'm pretty sure it was this matchup. Where at rhythm have these all these two toughness things survive through shocks. So what if I still play that rhythm? I know a Johnny. And I just have one rhythm. Oh, I think I'm supposed to cut Tajik. Because it's a three drop that dies to shock. Yeah, I think Tajik was the other card I cut yesterday. Baffling End doesn't... Yeah, it doesn't touch Phoenix. Alright, this is the Feather game. For sure. Oh yeah, there's Feather. All right, we only need one red. Gosh, my hand doesn't do anything, though. I guess we get some Legionnaires. I don't really love Legionnaires against the Shock deck. That's where we're at, though. Tajik needs to have reach with the sword turbines. Yeah, Dreadhorde. Uh, Dreadhorde Arcanist. Yeah, that card's really good. Or are you talking about Dreadhorde Butcher? Oh, that card's also really good. The Dreadhorde cards are good. Basically all of them. All the cards that say Dreadhorde. Melody, Drake, so they're missing lands. It's unfortunate I got too many of those lands. <laughs> I 
Should have just kept that first hand and drawn a red source and a two drop. Yeah, maybe I should have. This is not looking good. My creature's dying to shock. That's a huge bummer. Oh, yeah. There we go. There we go. Now we're doing it. Love it. No more dying to shock. Oh, no. Fight. Feather time. The problem is I want to cast Collision. That's like the big problem. Has haste. Uh, I meant to do the. Uh. Fail. Space Zone too worried about dying. Here, if I attack with both. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. If I attack with both, I'm just most likely taking lethal. And yeah, I would have been taking lethal. Uh, I should have been 3-3 three, three haste. I have not done Merfolk Simic Proliferate thing. No, I have not. Okay, well, that thing got coiled anyway. So, I lost one one damage. Counter. All right, got to scry, land at the bottom. That was the thing. I was like, if they have this third Crackling Drake, or fourth Crackling Drake, wow, we're lucky. I was going to say, I'm going to feel bad about um, I was like, I'm going to feel bad about this. If they have uh, that fourth Crackling Drake of using the Thrash too early. Just wait a second for the for the deck exclamation point deck. MTG bot sometimes slow. I uh, don't have the next sub battle stream scheduled yet. Um, we have had 13 out of 20 sub goals hit so far to get to the next one.
We've gone through all four Crackling Drakes. They do have this Phoenix that can, like, infinitely block. Hey, what's up, Metal Joe? Thanks for the sub there. That's sub number five today. Halfway to a sub goal. Wow. We're drawing fire here. Got that sub luck. Time to Colossus. Uh, should put our opponent down to one. Okay, but then the Legionnaire is dead. Oh, that doesn't even kill our opponent. Or that doesn't even kill the Legionnaire, sorry. Wow. Oh, you're welcome, Metal Joe. Glad you're enjoying these decks. Glad you've been trying them out and everything. Yeah, we think we should... See? Yeah, take a, like, some... Some, like, bets or whatever of, like, what's gonna happen in the final episode of Game of Thrones. See, I don't, I don't know. I don't... I feel like I don't even want to because I don't want I don't want other people's opinions of like what what's going to happen because then I don't want that I don't want to be I want to just have it all be a surprise basically if that makes sense I just want it to be a surprise and No, yeah, I wouldn't, yeah, we wouldn't do that on stream. We'd probably just do that in the, um, do that in the Game of Thrones room. All right, can we get this last point of damage in? They keep on getting the Phoenixes back. Dang, they have infinite spells. Is that three Phoenixes now? Wow, what a turn for our opponent. Am I dead? No, I'm at 13. Okay, I'm not dead yet. What a turn for them. All right, we're going to have to rip something here. Hmm. Been enjoying the Arcbow deck quite a lot. Two color decks really have an advantage in consistency. That is true. Okay. Let's see if they can get these things back yet again. Man, they're down to 17 cards. Man, this deck's crazy. When we killed that fourth Crackling Drake, I thought we had it. Another one of those. That's lethal. Hey, what's up, Mitchin? Thanks for that resub there. Thanks, Mitchin. So maybe Tajik and Vindicator I should be taking out in this really shock-heavy deck. What if I do go Cinder Vines route? I don't usually like Cinder Vines, but our, our deck is fast enough that maybe maybe we could actually kill our opponent with like these Cinder Vines. 
I wouldn't normally do that. But maybe we can. I'll try two over the Vindicators. They're just always going to be dying to shock, even with Rhythm of the Wild. Oh, that one hit point did end up losing the game, right? Yeah, yeah, I could have dealt one extra earlier. Yes, I could have. And then, yeah, we did. We got our opponent down to one, and couldn't couldn't finish it out. So yeah. The the choosing the haste instead of the one one counter on the creature with haste, I dealt one less point of damage, and that was the difference. Well, if this was Vindicator, I'd be able to play Vindicator next turn. It's not Vindicator. No Phoenix. Oh, my gosh. Ugh. Well, we've been drawing pretty well mana-wise uh, in other games, and so I guess this was bound to happen. This really hadn't happened in our like our two leagues. So we went 5-1 and 4-2, not bad. Both losses this time to Phoenix, but I could have won the second game. It was really close. So this loss is my fault. Well. Can we pull this out? Had to keep hitting land drops towards this Dawnbringer. No, not that version. I wish I could be attacking, but I just can't. Hey, Buffet. Chronic Slayer said it is a spinoff of sorts with March, Pledge of Unity, and Finale of Glory. Lots of fun. Awesome. Never Feather. We, we played the Feather one time. I should have won that game. I messed it up. They're just always Phoenix. There's two Phoenixes also. Game over. We lost. Okay, so Naya Feather still played still played really well, honestly. That that last one, 
as we talked about, there was the opportunity. I got my opponent down to one life, and earlier in the game, I could have got one extra life in that I that I missed with the rhythm of the wild choosing the wrong thing. Um, so could have got that that other one. But so both of our losses were to Phoenix. Phoenix is kind of rough how it just keeps on coming back. Um, yeah, four two still good, still good for sure. Yesterday we went five one with the deck, right? And so today we went four two. Um, and I'm pretty sure yesterday we beat Phoenix. And it was really like that, that game three, you know, we didn't get to play much magic at all. Um, which that happens sometimes playing a 23 land, three color deck. That's going to happen. But yeah, this deck was a lot of fun still. Maybe... So, you know, like, we could have Seal Away instead of Baffling End, but then against Mono White, Baffling End was key. Like, Baffling End's key against Mono White of, like, getting rid of the Benelish Marshal. And, you know, we got rid of, like, creatures that weren't tapped. Like, Seal Away was a lot better against Phoenix, but Baffling End's just going to be better against Red and White, and that's really what the card's in there for. I think if I... I think if I just, like, get pretty good mana and everything, like, we're going to have an okay Phoenix matchup. We just ended up losing both of those. The second one we could have won, though. And the first one we didn't, again, we didn't play Magic in one of the games. We were just mold to five. But basically both of those matches against Phoenix, we had a game where we didn't get to play any, anything. Uh, but there we go. Do you know if any of the old sets come back at some point? I, I don't know at all. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> it would just all be like speculation or anything, but yeah, I have no idea. Um, don't know. Anyway, that's Naya Feather. This deck was still fun. I enjoyed it. Uh, I think we're going to be continuing to play this deck. Um, I don't, again, I wasn't like, Vindicator was pretty sweet. We got to do some cool stuff with it. Tajik was good. Domri was good for us. So I don't, I don't really know of anything necessarily to like that I really want to change. I'm sure sideboard wise, there's probably some things, but maybe not. I don't know. I like, I like all the cards we have over here. I haven't really been disappointed by anything yet, or like have another card that I'm like, oh man, I need, you know, X card, yet. So I don't know. Ooh, that's a good question. Actually, that's that's pretty good, Pouty. I didn't. I don't know why I just didn't even consider that. But that's actually that's even better. Okay, never mind. We got. I was. Always, I was just thinking about like the white removal. But yeah, we should just play lava coils instead of baffling in, because then we can lava coil phoenix, and lava coil gets rid of things. Yeah, lava coil is better. Okay, never mind. We got an upgrade. Got an upgrade. Coil. I guess coil doesn't take out hydroid crisis. Is that a big deal? We got Collision for Hydro Crisis. And like Wild Growth Walker can get a lot bigger than Coil. Wild Growth Walker could be a little bit more of a problem now without Baffling End. But that's fine. Okay. Uh, what about Rekindling Phoenix in the deck? I think so it would just be like Sideboard, I guess. It would be Phoenix over like Domri. I don't know if we need more than more four drops. I like a I like Aurelia and a Johnny more. Those cards are both really good. But I mean Rekindling Phoenix is awesome. Uh how do we deal with eight eights and the like? We just I don't know, attack through them. I suppose. Attack around them. Yeah, just race. Kind of thing. Put a Colossus on one of our creatures, give it plus four, plus two. On, like, one of our creatures. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, if you're watching Nye Feather here later on YouTube, thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed it. Please hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. But thanks for watching.